Andrea, we spend a lot of time at the Global Fertility Academy talking about embryology and talking about the clinical side of ART. And you know, one of the things that we really need to talk a little bit about is quality of life of the patients, of the, the couple. And I know uh, there's some areas of interest for you that maybe we can touch upon. Absolutely. I think when we talk about infertility, we spend so much time talking about procreative sex and, and the goal of having a child that we sort of forget about what sex usually means for a relationship and the relationship itself. And that can be significantly impacted when a couple has infertility and they're undergoing an evaluation and treatment. So, so how do you keep it in there? I, I mean, are there strategies? Are, are there tactics? How would you counsel a couple? I think the first thing is to realize that we need to ask about it. So sex is not something that most people like to talk about. It's a very private thing. So not only from the patient side, but also from the healthcare provider side, we all often don't talk about it. But I think as part of one or more of the visits when a couple is coming in to see you, asking a simple leading question, you know, since you've been undergoing a fertility evaluation, how has your sexual relationship changed? Um, and, and maybe asking it open-ended that way as opposed to has it changed, but how has it changed? Or are there any obstacles, barriers, issues that you face from a sexual standpoint since this has been going on? And that may be the opening at least to allow a couple to bring up the topic. Well, I know that even when you learn your first physical exam, part of the history is the sexual history. And, and that's always a tough one, even from a medical student perspective. And now you're talking about something where it's a couple, it's two people, it's very private. Um, do you think there's a tool that could be developed? Do you think there's a checklist? Is there something that could help the healthcare professional? Yeah, I think that's a great question. There certainly are some tools out there for how to take a sexual history. The CDC has one that focuses on the five Ps, which have to do with partners and, and pregnancy and you know sexually transmitted infections. Um, I'm not sure that in this setting that's exactly the structure, but probably one could design that. It's funny that this should even be an issue, right? Because when a couple comes in and they're talking to an infertility specialist, sex comes up, but it becomes a very mechanical, right. um, sort of clinical piece, and sometimes we don't get to those other questions. So even just that recognition that I need to think about what this means for the couple and normalizing some of what often goes on, that some of the experiences can be negative, and that's natural, and that's okay. I think that kind of uh, normalizing and beginning of the conversation can help. And, and what's the outcome? What's the measure of success? Well, I think it's keeping people together and it's quality of life. We know from different studies that have been done and one that was done uh, at Stanford about five years ago that if you compare or ask women who have infertility about sexual disorders that cause distress versus normal healthy controls, the rates in terms of incidence are about 45% versus 25% in the healthy controls. And that can range from a loss of desire to what we would now call genital pelvic pain disorders or what we used to call vaginismus and dyspareunia, right. and also not being able to reach orgasm. And we forget about the men often, where there can be also loss of desire and then erectile dysfunction or ejaculatory dysfunctions. So it's a real phenomenon. The goal would be to prevent as much of that as we can to maybe even allow people to separate the sex that they're doing to try to make a baby and recreational sex, so that at the non-fertile part of the cycle, to allow them to just have pleasure, right? And it doesn't have to be intercourse, it's intimacy, and it's keeping that relationship um, and those intimate acts in whatever form they are a part of the relationship. I wonder if you could write a sex prescription. You know, we write prescriptions for exercise, we could. And we say that, we both say that a little tongue in cheek, but you certainly could write a sex prescription or allow them to not have it have to be intercourse, to give them permission to do other things and explore. In a non-infertility setting, when couples have sexual issues, and we sometimes will prescribe sensate focus exercises, where we take intercourse off the table, that's what the problem is, don't do it. And we really help them re-explore and establish intimacy through central touch, through massage, through other things where there isn't that focus on 
the act and what leads to performance anxiety. And so we absolutely could write a prescription or give exercises to do at home. What strikes me is it, it has a, a larger benefit, right? Because I think sometimes the stress and psychological issues that come up during the infertility treatment may actually benefit from a pleasure prescription. So Absolutely. I think when we look at a problem or, or what can be a crisis for a couple in terms of infertility, you know, there's danger with it in terms of what it can do to a relationship, but there's also opportunity. And focused the right way, sometimes that can bring people together and learning to really build on the strong parts of their relationship can sometimes be a good thing in the end. Thank you. My pleasure.